If you want to test out Android applications, there's only really so far that an emulator can take you. At some point, you're going to have to run on hardware, and one of the easiest ways to do that is with two applications. So the first one is screen copy, and the second one is sound copy. So screen copy is how we're actually getting this video feed right here. This is actually a cast of my actual phone. And sound copy, basically what that's going to let us do is cast the sound over. Now, I tested this earlier, and it should still be working. It actually maintains a tree structure, and the best way to think of a tree is think of a git re and hopefully you guys were able to actually hear that. Now the reason why I'm covering these together is because there's no real reason to cover one and not the other because they sort of complement each other. So this would obviously be useful as just a screencast, but it wouldn't be as useful as how it is because the way it's set up right now is to actually accept user input from the computer as well. So the problem with using just an emulator is one, it doesn't have access to gesture controls, two, you don't have access to multi-touch, and three, a lot of the emulators don't have the ability to access a camera. Whereas if you're just testing that out on hardware, there's no reason why you can't access that stuff. And by using screen copy and sound copy, it makes it so it's really easy to interact with the device from your computer. Now setting this up from the computer side is incredibly easy. All you have to do is run screen copy and that will start up the video cast and then sound copy will start up the audio cast. Now, this isn't all you have to do to get it to work. You also have to do some configuration on the phone side as well, but I'll show you that towards the end of the video. So if for whatever reason you have multiple devices connected to your computer, you can use the dash S option to basically select which device you want to use and you pass in the ID of the device. Now, how do you get the ID of the device? Well, this application is actually using Android Debug Bridge in the background. So if we just run ADB Devices, as you're going to see, we have the ID of the device I have connected. So if I go and copy that and I run screen copy dash S and pass in that ID, that should go and connect to that device. And as you're going to see, that worked perfectly fine. So if this is lagging out your phone or your computer because you're on really low end hardware, you can actually go and modify some of the video settings. So if we just run screen copy with the dash dash max dash FPS, we can modify what the max FPS is going to be. Let's set it to something like five. And as you're going to see, we unlock this. On the cast, it's running much, much slower. But if you're on slow hardware, this might actually speed up the hardware itself. But my suggestion before you go and touch the max FPS would be to lower the bit rate. So... By default, the bitrate is set to 8 megabit, but if you want to lower it to something like, say, 2 megabit, that can be done with the dash dash bit dash rate option or the dash B option. So let's set it to something like 2M, so that'll be 2 megabit. And as you're going to see, it looks a little bit worse, but most of the time it's going to be just fine. And when you've actually lowered it like this, you're still retaining the same frame rate. So if whatever you're doing is reliant on smooth motion, this might be a better way to address it. Another way you can go and address it is by modifying the max size. So dash dash max dash size. And let's set it to something like 1024. And if I go and unlock that, now you can't tell much of a difference, but the resolution actually is a little bit lower. So that should address any performance issues, but if we have any weird cropping issues where basically the cast isn't showing the entire screen, we can use the dash dash cast option and pass in a width. So let's say 500 by 1000, and then we can pass in an X and a Y offset. So let's say 40 and 20. And if we try to run this now, as we're going to see, the crop is really weird because, you know, my crop was already just fine. But if you were having any issues with that, play around with those settings and you could probably get the entire screen to be visible. If we need to cast the screen, but we don't need to actually see it on the hardware itself, we can run two options. So if we just run the dash capital S option and the dash lowercase w option, what this is going to do is the first option is going to make it so the screen turns off and the dash w option is going to make it so the device stays awake. So if we go and run this now, as you're going to see, we see the lock screen, but the hardware screen is still turned off. The dash R and the dash dash record format option can be used to record the screen. So dash R is for the file name. So let's call it file.mp4 and dash dash record dash format will give you the actual format of the video. So let's just say the format is mp4. And if we go and run this, it's going to start recording the screen. So let's just unlock it. And if I go and stop this now, it should have a file ready for me. So this should be located in the folder that I'm in right now. So mp4. If you go and play this, 
as we're going to see, we now have a video of the screen itself. But I already have a recording app, so I might as well just use the recording app for it. But if you don't have one though, and you need to record the video, that option is there if you want to use it. So if you're trying to use this for debugging, how do you actually get the APK file to the phone? Well, it turns out it's really easy. All we have to do is start up screen copy, unlock the phone, and then just drag and drop a file. And if we go and go back into the file manager, as we can see, the file has now been sent over. And if you're trying to do this with an APK file, it's going to prompt you for an installation. By default, it's going to try to copy files to the root of your SD card, but if you want to change that, that can be done with the dash dash push dash target option, and then just pass in the path you want to use. So SD card slash whatever folder slash whatever folder, basically wherever you want to save the files to. And there are actually key bindings for the screencast as well to do things like, say, power on the device or switch the device between different modes. So if we go into the help menu for that, we can copy from the system clipboard, we can rotate the device, we can turn the screen on, we can turn the device off, power on, things like this. Now, I'm not going to go through all of these just because there's way too many in here. If there's anything you want to try out, though, I would recommend coming to this list and then playing around with some of the keys in here. Now... I can't say if all of them are going to work on every single device. Most of them should work, but you might have some weird ROM that for whatever reason, this doesn't play nicely with. So on generally standard Android ROMs, everything is going to work fine. But if you have something weird, I can't guarantee it's going to work. And as for the options of sound copy, they don't exist. You run sound copy and that's all you get. Now on the Android side, to actually go and make this work, what we need to do is enable USB debugging. And to enable USB debugging, we also have to go and enable the developer options. Now, the way we do that is slightly different depending on which version of Android you're on. But on my version, what we have to do is go tap the build number seven times. If that doesn't work, I would recommend looking up your specific phone and checking how to enable the developer options. So on my phone, what we have to do is go into the settings and find the about phone section. And from here, what we do is go click on the version. And then in here, you'll see you have the build number. So if you start tapping on this and you tap on it seven times, it should give you a prompt saying, hey, do you want to enable the developer options? I think you have to put in your phone's lock code. And then once you've done that, it should be enabled. And from there, what you have to do is go and look for something called developer options. Now, I have no idea where in this list it actually is. But luckily for me, there is a search bar. So if we go and look for developer and we search for that, as you can see, developer options are right here. So it looks like it's under the additional settings. It's probably going to be in a similar place on your phone as well. So if we go into that and then look for USB debugging and we go and then enable that slider. So once you've done that, there's one more thing you need to do. So when you plug in the phone and you try to run screen copy, it's not actually going to work because most phones will just default to USB charging. So what you have to do is go into that settings window and change it over to transfer photos. I don't know why it's transfer photos and not transfer files, but it has to be on transfer photos. And once you've done that and you try to run screen copy, it's going to give you a prompt on your phone to authenticate a computer. Once you've done that, then you can actually cast the device. Now, as for sound copy, all of the same steps apply, but once you actually go and run sound copy, it's going to prompt you to install a new application. So you might have noticed this little sound copy application on my home screen. That right there is how sound copy is working. And every time you actually want to cast sound from your phone, you need to make sure this application is running. If it's not running, then it won't work. According to the GitHub page, you can apparently connect the device over Wi-Fi as well, but I haven't tested this out, so I can't tell you how well it works or not. If someone wants to test it and let me know in the comment section down below, then feel free to do so. But my suggestion is if you have an open USB port and you have a USB cable around, just do it over USB because it's going to be easier. Now, obviously, this is mainly useful for developers, but maybe we'll get bored in the future and want to do some Termux videos or look at some custom ROMs and record some videos on those. I don't know what I'll do in the future, but for now, I think it's a really cool application. So I think that's going to be pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim, Corbinion, Andrew, Craig, Nathan, Montezar, Joseph, Pitty, Rowe, Tony, Donald, John, Marek, Mikel, Nephite, Spagin, Tease, and Zilva. 
If you want to go support my work, there'll be some links down below. My Patreon, subscribe, start my coin trim, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, which is Tech Over Tea, available on Library and YouTube for the video version and the audio version available basically anywhere. And this channel is also available on BitChute, BitTube, and Library. I did that in the wrong order, and I completely confused myself. Go watch it there if you want to see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube. I can't guarantee the quality of the videos will be any better, though. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.